Well, hey everybody, I'm Jerome Rethlin with a 2019 roundup of four movies that I just saw very recently, Serenity, Captive State, Polaroid, and Haunting of Silver Falls The Return. The reason that these movies are not getting individual reviews is I do not have enough time and none of them are worth a full review because, oh boy, they're all pretty goddamn shit. There's two generic horror movies and two movies that try to play around with, I guess, some good ideas in their mind, but nope, they just end up being generally pretty goddamn shit. Expect for end-of-year movie uh, countdowns to be up just within the next few days, including 10 favorite and least favorite movies with honorable mentions, and 20 favorite and least favorite horror movies of the last decade, with some honorable mentions, of course. <clears throat> and I may do one more of these movie round of things if I get some time, but otherwise, this is just my way of getting up to about 61 2019 releases that I've seen. So I hope you guys enjoy, but yeah, just bear in mind, None of these movies are any good, and from here on, there be spoilers. So the first one is Serenity, and I have notes here because I got four movies to memorize, so forgive me if I look at some of my notes. But it's directed, by, uh, directed and written by Stephen Knight. And this cast is pretty goddamn solid in Serenity, and no, not the 2005 sci-fi movie. This one had Matthew McConaughey, Anne Hathaway, Jaiman Hansu, I hope I said that right, the guy from Amistad who's fucking terrific, uh, Diane Lane looking absolutely incredible, um, and Jason Clark playing a drunk that's a bit of a prick and abusive and everything. Jason Clark seems to be typecast in playing a drunk with marriage problems. I mean, he did Winchester and he's done in other movies recently. So in this one, <clears throat> this was the one that had the trailer where Matthew McConaughey is living a quiet life, you know, away from everybody on an island. I mean, he's like around people, but he's away from his life. And his ex-wife girlfriend shows up, played by Anne Hathaway, and says, hey, my new husband is very abusive. I want you to take care of him. He's going to come out on this boat, and you're a fishing captain. You know how to, uh, you could dispatch people, and I'll hand you $10 million, and that's pretty much it. Oh, and there's a kid involved. They have a kid together, uh, not the stepfather, but obviously Matthew McConaughey and Anne Hathaway. Boy, that's a bit of a mouthful, you know, to say with those two actors. And the kid has, designs video games and sinks his life into computer games and stuff like that because he has such a troubled home. He's a very smart boy. He sinks his, uh, you know, time into this particular video game about, you know, island life in a fishing boat and everything. You want to guess what the fucking twist is? The fucking twist is it's a goddamn video game. This whole thing of his dad and people there and the his mother and the stepfather being involved there isn't a video game. I mean, the actual stuff of, like, the abuse is actually taking place, you know, in the real world. And Rob Thomas wishes it would stop hassling him, but enough Matchbox 20 references. It's a fucking video game. It's fucking stupid. It's absolutely goddamn stupid. It's one of those that tries to have a, you know, a <clears throat> grandiose, like, epic vision like Interstellar, which Matthew McConaughey was also in. I mean, it doesn't try to shoot that high because that movie did have an insane budget. But this is one of those where it's a movie that tried to act smarter than it really was. And then the, the son dispatches the, uh, the stepfather. Because he's tired of him abusing his mother and Jason Clark once again being typecast as an abusive drunk. This movie was this movie was shit, despite the cast. I was very disappointed by how shit this movie was, but I'm like, okay, you know, sometimes twists like that can work. It didn't work here. And there was also a bit of a weird thing where like water spilled, but then there was a scene where Matthew McConaughey could communicate with his son despite being in a fucking video game world. And whatever. Which I guess the implication was is that he had died in a, in the war and this was his way of communicating with him and whatever it was it was weird frequency like shit and it was bullshit f that pull up there f serenity gets a goddamn f it's absolute shit i mean i know that i know there are some people out there who like it and that's fine i didn't and i like this cast and again diane lane <clears throat> i hope she gets used in some better movies than this because she's actually had a pretty good catalog of movies even with some ups and downs i like her we then go to captive state um which was directed by Rupert Wyatt, uh, who directed uh, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Oh boy, um, here we go. This one had John Goodman. It did have Vera Farmiga, who I absolutely love. It had a newcomer, at least a newcomer to me, uh, Madeline Brewer. I believe she's in The Handmaid's Tale. And it had Ashton Sanders and Jonathan Majors. And this tells the story of an alien invasion, years after an alien invasion, where these aliens, you know, attack and they... They, they basically enslave humanity, but then humanity, some of humanity, like the rich people, the politicians, make a deal with them where, yes, aliens, you can take over the world. And 
enslave our people and we can be rich and we can live in harmony and we can help you harvest our natural resources so the earth dies even quicker. There were, may have been some metaphors they didn't beat you over the head with enough here, but oh boy, this, this movie could have been at least decent, but the whole enslaving, enslaving another race thing sort of reminded me of District 9. I do not like any movies that remind me of District 9 because I thought District 9 was putrid. There are other people who disagree. The one that this mainly reminded me of was Skyline, a movie that I would put in my top 20 worst movies of all time. Skyline was something that I absolutely fucking hated <clears throat> with, the, with the Fury of a Thousand Suns. I don't know why, but I just did. Maybe it's because of the whole bonkers premise and everything and all the bullshit. But with this, uh, again, nearly 10 years later, you got Jonathan Goodman, or John Goodman, rather. And, I mean, he could be called Jonathan Goodman. Who the fuck knows? I don't care. You don't care. John Goodman, you know, of Roseanne fame and all that stuff. And 10 Cloverfield Lane, who has thankfully lost a whole lot of weight. He is in this. And he is, um, he's you know, overseeing this uh, section of Chicago that's been taken over. It's just, there's this closed zone area and there's this resistance that's trying to fight back against the alien invaders because of course, they, uh, of course there is. It's all these generic, you know, <clears throat> generic cliched bullshit things where you have the scrappy resistance people. They want to fight back against the alien invaders and this kind of stuff and everything. And it just, it was bad. Because it was a lot of tell, don't show. There were a few alien attacks, but it was so fucking dark you couldn't see a goddamn thing. You got to see a brief thing of, I guess, the aliens getting their armor, like, removed. And suddenly, like, you know, suddenly, like, they couldn't breathe in our atmosphere. And that was in, like, one scene. There are these two brothers that were kind of at odds with each other. And... The whole resistance thing and whatever kind of goes belly up because they try to they they attack this one politician they blow him they blow him up or have him with a, a weird clear gel bomb and everything and he blows up Soldier's Field. Once again, Seth Rollins hates football. That's a shout out to all my wrestling fans uh, that watch this. And with this movie, <clears throat> after that, John Goodman has his um. John Goodman has his job to do and everything, wants to maintain his job, but maybe he's a spy and maybe he's been working with this resistance all the time. Oh, wait, then we get to the end of the movie and guess what happens? He gets this whole full body clear bomb thing and goes down into the closed zone and then it explodes uh, or at least explode. Like they show the beginning of an explosion and then they stop because they couldn't afford to fucking shoot it. I don't mind cheap movies. I don't mind cheap sci-fi movies, cheap superhero movies. I watched a movie called Freaks that I absolutely loved. Um, I don't mind some cheap movies. They're done in sci-fi setting. They're done with whatever. That's fine. That's cool. You can make a budget work um, even if it's like 10, 20 million and stuff like that and actually make it work even with a couple name actors. You just have to know your scope. This movie didn't. It tried to aim for the stars and basically end up burrowing into the Earth's core. Thankfully, it wasn't the movie of the core. Um... Yeah, Captive State also gets an F. It just F. Pull up there. Not very good. It was not very good. I wanted I wanted to try to be kind to it. I was actually closing in on, I'd say probably about a C minus, maybe a D plus, and then everything just fell off. It just wasn't very good. So there we go. And then we get to Polaroid, which is about a killer camera. That's about it. It's from the director of the Child's Play remake, and he also directed a sh uh, Polaroid short. <clears throat> and you can tell this movie should have ended up just staying a short because it's about a killer camera. Have I mentioned that? Opens with two girls finding a uh, finding a camera, you know, this Polaroid thing. They take One takes a picture for this other one's boyfriend. Like, hey, you know, you want to show your boyfriend you're all sexy or show this? Like, take a picture like this, but make it a picture that only he can that only he can see. Like, you know, just a Polaroid thing. And, of course, it takes a bit for the film to develop because the picture prints out. And then does this. Oh, and yeah, there's a ghost that haunts it. The spirit of a killer that haunts the whole damn thing. And then you get sequences like sometime later where you get the main girl, Bird, played by Catherine Prescott, who is a nerdy girl and everything, And but she works in an antique shop. She gets the camera. She takes pictures of her friends. They start dying. We get the explanation scene. We get the research scene. We get the fact that, like, oh, it turns out that, you know, the that there was this killer this photography teacher who killed numerous people 
um, or killed, you know, killed three teens, was going to kill a fourth one, but then ended up getting killed. And the wife of this killer, who is still alive, by the way, in the same house, explains, oh no, it's because these kids tortured her da their daughter, took pi lewd pictures, and then ended up, um, you know, she ended up hanging herself, and then the father took vengeance. Oh wait, no, the timeline of events was way off, because it was actually that the father was sexually abusing the daughter, the wife turned a blind eye, and the kids were trying to get the pictures from her to say, hey, give us the pictures, we'll go to the police, we want to help you. And, well, the father's spirit was having none of that, so he was trying to kill them to hide the evidence. He dies while getting electrocuted in that little, you know, pooly area where you develop pictures in a dark room. And then he ends up, um, you know, holding on to the camera, so his spirit goes into the camera. That that's that That's how electricity, you know, helps things, clearly. Um, this movie was very generic, a very, very generic horror movie with really no good parts to it. It was also very dark. There was a whole lot of shit where it's like, you're like, wow, I really can't, I, I really can't see a fucking thing. There, the, the acting was fine. The acting wasn't anything special. It wasn't anything bad. Nobody was particularly horrible in it. What are you going to do in a movie like this? You could act horrible. Or you could act like um, the people in the next movie. And I'm going to get to that right here. But yeah, Polaroid also gets an F. It gets an F. It's right up there. And A Haunting of Silver Falls, The Return. If you've seen A Haunting of Silver Falls, the title lied to us because now there's a second haunting at Silver Falls. So it should have been called Another Haunting at Silver Falls. I don't know why they just didn't call it that. Or <clears throat> A Haunting of Silver Falls Revelations or something like that. So if you don't remember much about Haunting of Silver Falls, don't worry, it wasn't very good. But there were these two twin girls that had met an e that had met a, dark, a bad end. This girl put a ring on her finger when she found it in the woods, escaping from a party when the police came, because that's all, that's what you do when you find a mysterious ring. You put it on your hand, and then these twins are trying to like get the ring off of her finger, but they're tr but they're also trying to say, hey, by the way, we know who killed us. It was somebody in your family. And then the events lead to that, and suddenly now, six years, six, seven years later, or whatever, we are back, and I don't know who asked for this. A Haunting of Silver Falls was not really that good of a movie, and it was not clamoring for a sequel. This movie also felt much more like DLC. Like, you could have re-released A Haunting of Silver Falls on Blu-ray and said, hey, here's a companion piece with some extra scenes, because really, there wasn't anybody, I mean, besides the two girls that were the twins, they were the only... <laughs> Cast members have returned that I can recall. That movie isn't exactly something totally memorable, so if there's anybody else that was in that movie, I apologize. But there was it, the acting was the acting wasn't very good. I mean, it was it wasn't even horrible. It just wasn't very good in the sense they had about that much material. Um, there were points where there were long drawn out um, driving scenes. There were long, drawn-out, like, walking scenes, and there were a few scares, I guess, because it was the, it was the girl's aunt, the main girl's aunt, that had done the killings, and now she's back, and she's trying to manipulate the doll twins and make them, and that's doll, D-A-H-L, by the way, not actual dolls. We're not going with that, but with this movie, it's like, they, they make it about the ant. The ant's doing the killing. She's doing the manipulating, this kind of stuff, even though she was the one that was doing the killing in the first one, but whatever. I guess we know how ghosts work. This movie didn't have to explain a lot because it had about that much plot. It really was not very good. There was this long, drawn-out, <coughs> like, walking scene at the end where if you actually skipped ahead 10 seconds here and there, here and there, as the main character was going down into this basement... To confront her aunt and to help the doll twins and wrap everything in a nice neat little bow. Well, guess what? You could have skipped three minutes. This scene took about three minutes. Or, it, I mean, it almost seemed to take ten minutes. The movie also was only 79 minutes long. With some credits at the end. So it was more like about 75 minutes. I cannot believe this movie dragged so much despite being so short. It really felt like something where it's like, okay, hey, it's your first film, you know, director. It's your, it's probably the first film for a lot of people that had any kind of production behind it, even though it didn't have much. The special effects looked horrible. And this movie just, it, it then tried to tease that there's pro we're possibly going to get a third one because maybe the ant isn't dead and this kind of stuff and or isn't actually totally gone. The spirit, it just, why? Why would you continue to do this stuff? Why do I continue to watch it? Oh, wait, I watch because I'm a sadist when it comes to horror movies. 
Haunting in Silver Falls also gets an F. There is a poll up there. So once again, guys, let me know what you think in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rithlin. I'll see you soon.